I'm Jen and welcome to my studio and today I wanted to talk to you guys about fun tap games for tap class during the holidays. So this is one for the dance teachers out there or if you're a student and you want to suggest fun games for your classes, that's good too. So like over like between Thanksgiving and the Christmas holiday, there's a bunch of weeks that you go to dance but a lot of times we do fun holiday activities like games or like fun holiday themed choreography combinations and stuff like that. I love to have lots of fun with my students, so I like to do a lot of games. So I wanted to give you a couple of ideas for games that you can play in your classes since this is about that time that the uh, dance teacher groups on Facebook and Instagram, everyone's like, do you guys have any ideas for games? I'm like, I should do a video teaching these games. Why not? So the first game that I want to tell you guys about is build a dance. So this is something that I do year round, honestly. It doesn't have to be with holidays, but during the holidays, you choose a holiday song. So you can choose like something everyone knows, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Frosty the Snowman, or you know, depending on what area you live in, you could do like the dreidel song. If you have a lot of Jewish students, that would, or you could just do the dreidel song anyways. You can teach them about Hanukkah. Um, so any song will work. You say, okay, so today we're gonna do Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And then, let's say you have like six or seven kids in your class. Maybe you have 20, maybe you have three, but let's go with six or seven. And you say, okay, so we're gonna do this. You create the dance as the teacher, but you only use the step that the students tell you. So you say, okay, to start off, Lexi, what step would you like me to use? And Lexi goes, I would want you to use a wing. And then you go, wow, starting a dance with a wing, huh? Okay, let's hit the ground running. So you would, create the step using a wing. So you go, okay, so we're doing, um, what did I say, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Reindeer? So you can go, Rudolph. <laughs> okay, there's, a, there's part of the dance. Okay, Jenny, what, what step would you like me to use? And she goes, Irishes. So you go, okay, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Great, you're starting to create a dance. Okay, Catalina, what step would you like me to use? I want you to use paradiddles. Awesome. So you have Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer had a very shiny nose. <laughs> so you basically take whatever rhythm you want. Had a very shiny nose. That's fine too. And you just keep building from there. So you ask every, each student in turn for a step first, second, and you have to use that step because you're letting them build the dance with you, but you can control the rhythm, you can control like how you use the choreography, and that's to make sure that everyone is able to do it. So a lot of times they'll be like, oh, well, paradiddles, and if you let them make it up, they might go like, but maybe there's somebody in the class that can't do paradiddles that fast. So if you make up the rhythm, you get to control the level of the dance. Maybe they don't have wings, so you come up with an alternative for somebody that doesn't do wings. But you let them pick the step, you put it together, and at the end, you have created a really, really fun dance. So that's one fun game that you guys can play. Another game, have you guys ever played telephone? Like as kids, you just, you say something, you whisper something into somebody's ear. Not good for social distancing, by the way. But you whisper something into somebody's ear, and then they whisper it, and then they whisper it, and by the time it gets back to you, it's a completely different sentence. <laughs> Purple monkey dishwasher for anyone that likes The Simpsons. <laughs> um, I'll never forget that episode. But you have telephone. I like to play this with tap. Even though everyone in the circle can see what the people are doing. Like, let's say I start and I go, okay, so the phrase that I'm going to do is... Now, the person to this side of me obviously saw me do that. But the rule is they can't do it what they can't do what I did. They have to do whatever the person before them did, even if it's wrong. So let's say I go, and then the person next to me copies it right. But then the person next to them goes, well then the person next to them has to copy that one. They go. And then let's say the person next to them goes and so on and so on. By the time it gets to that person, it's probably not gonna look anything like what you started with, and that's the fun of it. Like, the goal is to try to make it the same, but it gets really fun when it's not. <laughs> so, that's something that I do year-round, but how do you make it Christmassy? 
the person that starts has to pick the melody of a Christmas song or like a Hanukkah song or some non-denominational holiday song. They have to choose that. So let's say I do... And that's what I decided to do. That's the dreidel song. So dreidel, 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 I need you back. That's what I do. They have to copy the step and the rhythm and let's see if it sounds like that song by the time it gets back. Now, with social distancing in place, this is the kind of thing that you want to make sure you have lots of room. Maybe you don't stand in a circle. Maybe your room doesn't allow for standing in a circle safely, especially since that's a lot of facing each other. That may not be a good idea. That's fine. You can just go down the line. If you're set up in squares or if you're set up like extra far apart, just go down the line. Just pick a specific order and don't vary from that order. Um, at least during that round. Then you can like say, okay, now we're going to start from over here and go there so that people aren't always uh, mimicking the same person. So that's, that's another really, really fun idea. That's a good one to play all year. I love doing games like that if I have like, if I'm injured or something and I can't like go full out in class, I'm like, all right guys, today we're going to do rhythm games and then they get really excited. Helps me save my knee, and this is a good tip for dance teachers, helps me save my knee. <laughs> also helps the class have a really good time and they learn a lot. So, and then another game that I love to play, this one's so hard. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. So this is really more for an advanced class. I don't know that this would work for littles. This is definitely for an advanced class, especially if your class understands music and it really will help them understand music. I call this piano keys. How to make this like holiday-ish, um, you pick a holiday song to do. So you can do this year round to any song. So not factoring in social distancing. You have your students stand in a line. Typically, this works best with, I think, 12 people. So typically, it works best with 12 people. It actually works best probably with like eight people as well. But honestly, any amount of people is going to work. So you have them line up. With social distancing in place, you put them in a formation that works for you, but also makes them understand what order they go in. And your students become the keys of the piano. This gets so hard. So let's say you have jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. So down the line, each dancer does one note, and then the next dancer does the next one. So it's like jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. And it just starts back over once it gets to the end of the line. For some reason, I assumed I had five people. But let's say I have eight. So it's Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I hope that was eight. <laughs> so basically each dancer does one note. They can do, they can do, they can do, as long as they just do one note. They can do anything that they want. Anything, but they can only make one sound and it goes down the line. This is a great listening exercise and it gets really funny like, this is one of those games that will have your dancers in stitches when it all goes wrong. It's going to be so funny. But when they get it right, it's just one of those moments where, like, oh my gosh, guys, we did it. And it, there's a lot of pride in that moment because this is a very difficult exercise. I remember I studied music in college, and this is one of those things that we did as, like, a major rhythm listening exercise. So I love incorporating that into my classroom. So I call this Piano Keys. Picking a holiday song makes it a holiday game. So that really helps too. Those are just three of the games that I play. I also do like Name That Tune, which I did in a video in another video. Basically, Name That Tune, you tap out the rhythm of a dance. And again, I put this in another video, but I'll mention it here as well. You tap out the rhythm of a song, not a dance. You are dancing. But you tap out the rhythm of a song, like let's say Frosty the Snowman. Right? You don't tell them it's Frosty the Snowman. You just do that and then they have to guess what song it was. I have a video, I'll link it down below, where I tap, I improv out a bunch of songs and Sean had to guess, um, my other half, uh, Sean, he had to guess what song it was. He did okay. He did okay. But some of them were really hard. Like, imagine doing silver bells. It's just silver bells. Wait, wait, wait. Silver bells. 
wait, wait, wait. Like that. Try to choose ones that are a little bit more interesting that the kids will be able to pick up. Or if you have an adult class, it could be fun in an adult class. I'm excited to play these in my classes this year. So you've got, what were those games? Um, you have Name That Tune, you have Telephone, you have Piano Keys, and I already forgot the other one that I said. What was it? Oh no. But that was a lot of ideas. <laughs> I don't know why I'm blanking, but don't judge me. Um, that's a lot of ideas for games for your classes. I know this is that time of year when we're just looking for fun things to give our kids to do because kids are ready to like check out. They're ready for the holidays. They're ready to just relax and we want to keep them engaged. So holiday games are so important in my opinion. Um, you can also, oh, it was the build a dance. That's the one. I forgot that one. <laughs> so you have telephone, build a dance, piano keys, and name that tune. So those are four fantastic games that you guys can play. And I mean, there's tons of other games that you guys can play. And you can also just like pick a Christmas song or a, ho a Hanukkah song or any holiday song and have your kids make up dances in groups. I love doing that too, because it gets their like creative brains going and it helps them to cooperatively work together. Sometimes it doesn't work, especially if you have some kids that are just too shy and don't want to do it. So what I do, if they're making up dances, I say, okay, so group, 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 make up a dance together. Make sure that everyone contributes in some way. You don't have to be somebody that does the choreography. Maybe you just contribute by saying, yes, that feels good, I like that. So feedback is a contribution because some people just, you know, they don't want to choreograph and that's fine. And then you have the shy kids that don't want to show it at the end of class. So maybe before you group everybody, you say, okay, who would not want to show this dance at the end of class to the rest of the students? And the people that raise their hand, you group them together and they don't have to show it. You can watch them create it, but they don't have to show it. It's the holidays, there should be no pressure. So, at least in my class, your class may be different. I hope that these ideas helped you guys out. I'm really loving all the holiday content that I'm putting on this channel this month. It's so exciting. I've got tons of stuff. There's every choreography piece that I'm teaching, like choreography tutorials, those are all holiday themed for the entire month of, well, between Black Friday and Christmas. Let's go with that. And um, I'm gonna be putting out like a Christmas song across the floor video perhaps and my triple time step is done in a very Christmassy outfit so that technique tutorials there and then just like uh, what to buy a tap dancer for Christmas kind of vlog I did the name that tune with Sean lots of fun stuff so make sure that you guys subscribe to this channel join the tap fam and I take requests if you want me to do a video on anything specific if there's something that would help you as a teacher or if there's something that would that you want your teacher to teach you so you want the idea or something tell me, I'd be happy to make the video for you and put it on this channel. This channel is a resource. This is so that you guys can become better dancers and practice while you know quarantine is here or just like on your own forever because this channel is gonna be here forever. Or it's just a good resource for teachers for like ideas and you know, maybe it's like a way for teachers to have class too because we don't always have time to have class, but you know, it could be 11 o'clock at night on a Friday, turn on YouTube, you can have class. So this is just, for you. This channel's for you guys. So make sure that you guys subscribe, hit that thumbs up button because it helps other people find this, vi this video easier. So other dance teachers can find it if you hit that thumbs up. Also hit that thumbs up because these games are fun. So, um, but anyway, I hope you guys learned a lot and got some good ideas for your classes. Please write in the comments if any of these games go really, really well. Um, if you have a video of you doing any of these games in your classes on Instagram, tag me. I would love to see it, please. I love this stuff, but um, yeah, I hope that this video serves you well, and as always,